And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed. To you it shall be for food. Genesis 129. Man did eat angels' food. He sent them meat to the full. Psalm 78, 25. Everyday Manna with Lisa. Hi, everybody, and Merry Christmas to you. On today's program, we are going to be making a brunch. Now, we, we're going to serve this Christmas morning. However, this is something you could do any time of the year. It's a wonderful, easy, make-ahead meal so that Christmas morning or whatever morning you're serving, you're not so rushed and you're not, you know, just in the kitchen the whole time while everybody else is having fun. And it's a great use of leftover. We're in today's a recipe we're going to be using some leftover ham. So let's get started. Now, we are going to be making a casserole first. We're going to make a ham and Swiss cheese breakfast casserole. And I have here uh, just a package of the sweet Hawaiian rolls. You know the ones I'm talking about. And I'm going to cut these up into cubes. Now, this is a dish that you want to make ahead. It's, you could even make it the night before and let it soak in the refrigerator overnight. That's even better. You don't have to use these particular uh, rolls. You could use croissants. You could use, um, like, cinnamon bread would be good in this, or, you know, really anything that you want, whatever kind of bread you want to use. I just really like these little rolls. I think I'm going to do this first. Just cut them into cubes. And I would totally make this the night before, let it sit overnight in the refrigerator, and then the next morning, all you have to do is put it in the oven while you are celebrating with your family or getting ready to go to wherever it is that you're going. This would be a great, you know, make-ahead dish for any time of the year. We're just cutting these into cubes. Challah bread would be really good in this if you have challah bread, which is wonderful. It's a, a Jewish eggy bread that is really good. I love it. There's a lady in Bristol that um, she has children at my son's schools, and she has made, in the past, has made homemade challah bread for me. And oh, golly, it's so good. And that makes, by the way, the best French toast you will ever put in your mouth. Mmm, so good. All righty. Now, we're just going to put our bread in the bottom of our dish. And let me get my bread crumbs up here. And I have, in this bowl, six eggs that I want to beat, break the yolks, and then just whisk them till they're light and fluffy. I'm using what would be the equivalent of like a two-quart casserole dish, a nine by, uh, what is that, eight, uh, eight by 10 or nine by 13 inch pan. I'm gonna add some half and half. Now I'm using half and half, but you could use milk or heavy whipping cream if you wanted to make it a little richer. I'm adding some salt, some pepper, some dry mustard, and some poppy seeds. And I'm going to add a little honey, if my honey will come down to the bottom. Come on, honey. A couple tablespoons of honey is good. Just something to kind of sweeten it up a little bit. And I've got here some shredded Swiss cheese, and I'm going to put about four ounces or so in this mixture. Set this to the side. And I have some leftover ham that we had for dinner. And it's really good. Now this is just a 
what they call a carving ham. I do want to cut off the um, edges of the ham here. I really just want that center part. You could use deli sliced ham if you wanted to. There are so many uses for leftover ham. This is just one of them. We make ham biscuits, we make uh, split pea soup, we make a bean soup with leftover ham, we fry it and just have it with fried eggs or scrambled eggs. There's just so many things that you can do with leftover ham. Now my boys love ham. It's not something we have very often at our home, just a baked ham. But it's a celebratory meal for us. So this is something, I know in our home, Christmas Eve is the bigger meal, typically. Because Christmas Day for many people is just so hustle and bustle and you know, you're going everywhere. So you know, this is a great thing to have Christmas morning. And, you know, if you have ham, then you have the leftover. If you have turkey, uh, maybe you have leftover turkey, you could use turkey in this. Just do the same thing I'm doing, kind of cube it up to bite-sized pieces. You want a couple of cups. Let's just get a little more. Cut off the rind really the skin but and there we go you don't have to get a hundred percent of it but I do want to get some of it and we're going to cut this up and what we're doing is we're making a custard and we're going to pour it over our bread and the bread the reason that you can do this ahead is the bread will soak it up and then you can uh, bake it off. Covered for about 30 minutes, 350 degrees. Uncover it for like 20 minutes and then bake it uncovered with some extra cheese on top. Now you could use, I'm using Swiss cheese because to me ham Swiss, you know? But if you wanted to use um, like white cheddar, you could do that. You really could use any, any kind of a cheese that your family likes. I just think ham and Swiss go so well together. Now, we're just gonna pour this over top of our bread. You're gonna stir that all together. Mmm, looks good already. And you want to kind of pat it out into a single layer. Press it down because you want that bread to soak up the eggy custard mixture. And I'm going to top it with a little more Swiss cheese. Altogether, you want about eight ounces or so of Swiss cheese or provolone or cheddar or whatever you're using, whatever kind of cheese you want. Now, we're going to cover that with foil. We're actually going to put that in the fridge and let it set overnight, if possible, but at least an hour to let that bread soak up that delicious, delicious custard that we made. And then you can pop it in the oven. I'm going to take a quick break, just clean up. When I come back, we're going to get started on a sour cream coffee cake muffin. I'll be back in just a minute. Now, when you're ready to bake your casserole, cover it with a foil, 
piece of, I like the nonstick foil, put it in a 350 degree oven covered for 30 minutes. And then while that's baking, you can make these muffins or you can make these ahead too. These are fabulous. One of my absolute favorite breakfast foods to have. Now in the mixer, if you don't have one of these stand mixers, you can use a hand mixer, it's fine. I have uh, two sticks of butter. Ideally, you want to have those at room temperature, but my bowl is not wanting to cooperate here. Just whip that up and then add two cups of sugar, a little bit at a time. And what will happen is the sugar crystals will help cut through that butter. Turn it up just a little. Two cups. You want to kind of beat that till it's fluffy. You want to add two eggs, one at a time. When that first egg is all incorporated, add the other. We're also going to add some vanilla. And we're going to add some sour cream, eight ounces or one cup. This makes it moist and rich and so, so, so good. I make a muffin sometimes. I, I'll need to make that on the program too kind of this recipe, but I add cream cheese to it. Mmm, so delicious. All right, let that go for about a minute until it's all incorporated together. We'll just let that kind of do its thing while we work on our flour. Now I have two cups of all-purpose flour. I have some baking soda and baking powder, some cinnamon, and a little bit of salt. And I'm gonna just use my whisk and I'm gonna combine those. And then with the mixer on low, don't have it anything but low, you wanna add this mixture to that a little bit at a time. Let me get a little. What I like to do is use either a little scoop or a little measuring cup or something and I add it in stages, just a little bit at a time with the mixer on low. If you've got that mixer up too high, you're gonna be wearing this flour mixture. So just a little bit at a time. And then when it kind of gets all of it, you know, you don't really see a lot of the flour mixture, add the next little scoop. And this is it for your batter. Muffins are really easy to make. Now I'm just going to add the remaining little flour mixture there. See that cloud? <laughs> and that's it. Don't over mix. If you over mix, then you're going to have a tougher muffin mixture, you know, muffin. And I don't want that. I want them to be tender. It is okay if you see little tiny, tiny granules of flour clean off my beater here. And then I like to take a spoon and kind of scrape down the sides a little bit and just lightly go over that mixture. And then I've got muffin tins here. Now you could bake this as a bread in a loaf pan if you wanted or mini muffin tins if you wanted or like I'm doing and make muffins. Now you could line these with liners if you want or you could do what I'm doing and just spray it with nonstick spray which I've already done. And I find an ice cream scoop is the perfect tool for this because it makes them all even and they bake at the same time. So it really does kind of make it a little easier. All 
I love these things. And these, again, you could make the day before or the night before and have them for your, I think I had that one a little too full. I mounded that one up, um, you know, for your breakfast Christmas morning. I love having like a brunch Christmas morning. You know, we typically, you know, everybody gets up and they're excited, especially if you've got children in your home. They get, you know, they get up and they're so excited. The last thing they want to do is stop to eat. So, you know, it's a good thing to get all the other things out of the way. And then you can, you know, have this cooking while you're doing the other things. I'm just going to do that one for now. And then, you know, you've got um, breakfast cooking while you are doing other things. Now, kind of smooth out the tops and flatten them a little bit. Okay, and then what we're going to do is we are going to make a topping for these. Now, in this bowl, I have some brown sugar, a little bit of flour, some cinnamon, and you do need a pinch of salt. I just think it adds something to it. I'm going to whisk that together. Then in this bag, I've got some whole pecans or pecan halves, actually. I'm going to squeeze out the air. This is a great job for your children. And then I've got a meat mallet, but you could use anything. And I'm going to kind of crush those nuts up. Now, I'm using pecans, but you could also use walnuts or almonds or leave out the nuts and add some oats, like the, the, uh, the Quaker oats. You, what you're wanting is that textural difference. This is going to be soft. That's going to be a little bit crunchier. And then you've got the nuts adding flavor, yes, but also some texture. So it's kind of an important thing. And you, you put as many or as few as you like in there. Stir it together with a spoon. And then just put some on each one and what I like to do is take a clean hand and kind of just lightly press it on there and that kind of pushes it a little bit down into lightly pushes it kind of down into the muffin so it stays on there a little better I think and these will bake for about 20 minutes at 350 degrees and then they will be done when a toothpick inserted into the center comes out clean. I'm just going to keep topping these and pop them in the oven. I'm going to take a quick break and clean all this up and when I come back our casserole should be done, our muffins should be done, and then we're going to make a wonderful, wonderful finish to this great Christmas morning brunch. I'll be back in just a minute. Now our casserole is almost done, so it is time to make a wonderful drink that you could have any day of the week. You know, if you know me, I love coffee, and I love mocha, which is a coffee and chocolate flavored mix, so we're going to make a homemade mocha coffee drink. This is just some milk, or half and half, whichever one you want to use. We're going to add a little bit of sugar. I've got it over like medium high heat. This is just the unsweetened baking cocoa. About a fourth of a cup. Just have a whisk. Whisk all that together. Mmm. You could totally make this in a crock pot too. If you have prepared coffee, 
You could absolutely use just hot coffee. That'll dissolve better when it's a little warmer. I'm just going to use some instant espresso coffee. I like strong coffee, so I'm going to add like three tablespoons. You add as much or as little. I think I'll do four. I like strong coffee. I don't want weak coffee. So I'm adding quite a bit, and I'm using espresso powder, but now you could use whatever you like. We're just going to heat that up. While that's coming up to a simmer, I would serve this with um, just some fruit and cheese maybe. You know, have like a little buffet thing. So I've just got some cheese cubes and some green grapes here. And then I want to serve it with some apple slices. Because, you know, I love fruit. So I have some red apples here, just red delicious apples. I'm going to actually core them. I don't peel mine, I scrub them. And I'm going to put them down in some lemon juice. And the reason I do that is to keep them from browning so that you can, you know, have them out on a buffet table. So you use whatever kind of apple you like. Honeycrisp is my absolute favorite, but they're not on sale. And they're expensive if they're not on sale, I think. So we're just going to use good old Red Delicious, which is the standard delicious apple. Macintosh are good, too. If you've never had a Macintosh, you want a sweet apple. Uh, you know, you want something that you can eat out of hand. I mean, I love Granny Smith apples, but they're just a little too tart for this. So you want to take just a uh, some kind of something and stir that around. I just have the juice of one lemon down in there and just coat the apple with it. It will add a little tang, but that's okay. And just let that soak for just a second and let's whisk our coffee mixture again if you have an immersion blender you could use that too or a regular blender it's just going to dissolve once it gets all hot mm, i love the smell of coffee and coffee and chocolate together is a match made in heaven. If you've never had that, coffee brings out the chocolate flavors in chocolate, makes it chocolatier, and chocolate brings out the coffee flavor, and makes it taste richer, and oh, God, I love it. You could also add a little tiny bit of cinnamon if you wanted to. There, it's almost done. Now, let's get our casserole out of the oven. I took the foil off, and I'm letting it bake. I let it bake for just a few minutes to kind of brown up that top. Now that obviously will need to cool down for about 25 minutes or so. But look at how delicious that looks with that wonderful caramelized cheese on top. It's bubbling hot. Let it cool for about 15 minutes before you try to serve it. And the custard will set up and that will be a wonderful meal. You know, you could make that for dinner too and then serve it with a green salad for a, you know, a, lot, a lunch or a light dinner. So this is almost ready. Let's put our apple slices beside our muffins. You could also do those muffins in little mini muffin tins if you wanted. I kind of overfilled mine just a little bit. So the weight of the nuts collapsed in the middle, but that's okay. They still taste good. If you're going to serve the apple right away, obviously you would not need to coat it with the lemon juice, but I'm not. So mm, let's see. We're going to have to move our little snowman here. Let's see. How am I going to do this? There we go. There's a wonderful little just fruit and muffin tray, some green grapes and some cheese cubes, a wonderful, wonderful casserole that's ready to go, and our delicious coffee mocha drink. See, you don't need to go to the coffee houses and pay four or five dollars for your coffee because that's what you're going to pay, and they're easy to make at home. You could, if you wanted to, 
do this very same recipe and add a little bit of a peppermint extract if you wanted a mint flavor. You could also add some almond extract if you wanted to make it taste, you know, kind of the, uh, that almond flavor. You could add some vanilla if you wanted some French vanilla flavoring. Up to you. I'm kind of a purist with coffee. I don't like the big flavors in there. I just like coffee, just plain or like this with hot milk and chocolate. If you, you know, if you wanted to serve this to kids and you don't want them to have the caffeine, leave out the coffee and put some mini marshmallows on top. But there you go is a wonderful, delicious and easy to fix hot coffee drink. You could multiply that as much as you need. This makes about four cups, but you could also put it in your crock pot so it stays hot, put it on low and it'll stay warm throughout your entire dinner party. These are just some quick and easy brunch ideas for your Christmas morning or any morning of the week, whatever day of the week it was. It's just typically at Christmas we have leftover ham or leftover turkey, and this is a wonderful way to use up that leftover uh, meat. It's a wonderful little casserole with Swiss cheese and ham because those two go together, made with the sweet rolls. Our wonderful coffee cake muffins, some apples and some fruit, some cheese, and our delicious mocha coffee drink. From all of us here at Living Faith Television to all of you there, no matter where you are, I do want to wish you a very, very merry, merry Christmas from our family to yours. You have a wonderful, wonderful Christmas morning, and I will see you next time on Everyday Manna. Thank you for watching Everyday Manna with Lisa. This program is made possible by viewers like you. Your support is continually needed to keep Christian programming on the air. Please send your best financial gift to Living Faith Television in care of Everyday Manna, P.O. Box 1867, Abingdon, Virginia, 24212.